The time is 4.30, and this is WKYT This Morning. We've learned some new details on a deadly officer-involved shooting in Harlan County. What agencies were telling us at the scene ahead this morning. Plus, it was a scary scene for a boater wanting to enjoy a ride on the Kentucky River. How the boater was rescued after getting stuck and what happened after it coming up. Also this morning, he's one of the most powerful Republicans in the country. We'll find out why Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell says his game is far from over. That's ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning and welcome to WKYT. It's good to have you with us on a Friday. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's check out what's happening with the weather because, Micah, we're hearing the weekend could get a little dicey. That's exactly right, especially the farther you go off into the weekend. The further into the weekend that you go, the more rain that's going to be moving on in. So I would say Saturday is definitely no washout, uh, but you still will have a few storms left over. But then we head off towards your Sunday, Monday. That's where it becomes pretty widespread. Defender radar network, nothing going on this morning. A couple of sprinkles back toward eastern Kentucky and a few storms off into West Virginia. It's more than likely if you're waking up this morning looking east, that's what you're going to be seeing off in the sky. 76 degrees there and Frankfurt 77 here in Lexington. It is another humid start to the day with that small chance of rain in the forecast again today. But this weekend, like we were talking about, we'll show you when that rain arrives, how much you're expecting, and how long it's going to stick around. We'll have all those answers coming up. Okay, we'll see you shortly, and we thank you. And we've learned some new information about a deadly officer-involved shooting in Harlan County. Police say it happened about 7 o'clock last night in the Woodland Hills subdivision near Harlan. State police say that officers from Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, ATF, Lexington Police and the Lexington Fire Department's arson unit were all at the scene of the shooting. Police say those officials were involved in an argument with a man. Police say that man was killed, but they did not say who shot him. Police have not released the identity of the man. No officers were reported injured. A boater taking a ride on the Kentucky River had to be rescued after getting stuck on a lock. That happened near lock number five road in Anderson County yesterday, not far from Lawrenceburg. Rescuers say the man was grateful for their help, but as WKYT's Monique Blair reports, he ended up being arrested after making it out of the water. What started out as a beautiful day on the Kentucky River for a Lawrenceburg man who was out on his fishing boat quickly took a scary turn. He claims that he ran out of gas in his boat. When he ran out of gas, his engine stalled and he went over the lock. Anderson County firefighters say the boat then got stuck on this lock, and you can see the boat is actually still there. Firefighters say the fisherman was trapped on these rocks for at least 30 minutes before he was rescued. He was very frantic. He was scared. He was. He was telling us, thank you, thank you so much for saving his life. Firefighters call the rescue risky and difficult because of exactly where the boat got stuck on the rocks. Two boats were then used to actually pull the fisherman from his boat onto the rescue boat. Once we got him to dry land, he was immediately detained by law enforcement. The fisherman, identified as Ronald Callahan from Lawrenceburg, was charged with operating a vessel under the influence of alcohol second offense. Callahan was not hurt during the rescue. Firefighters tell us it is important for boaters to know that it is illegal to cross over this lock, as it is not only dangerous, but it is also private property that belongs to the Kentucky River Authority. We are called out here, uh, probably get about one run a year out of this lock, at least. In Anderson County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Several agencies, including four fire departments, state police, and the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife helped with that rescue. More than 200 general electric workers in Kentucky have learned that they'll be losing their jobs. GE announced it plans to close its plant in Lexington and its halogen light plant in Somerset next year. Garrett Weimer has more on why the company made the decision. It sits on the end of the aptly named Edison Drive. But as technology changes and the light bulbs they make begin to disappear, so will the Lexington Lamp Plant, GE announced. Somerset's plant will too. In a statement, a spokesperson told WKYT, quote, Looking forward, GE Lighting will focus entirely on driving innovation and growth in LED technology. By 2020, half of the U.S. market's consumer light bulb sockets will be LED, and more than 80% of all global lighting revenues will come from LED. 
A GE spokesperson says the shift away from traditional incandescent light bulbs and toward LEDs has left the Lexington plant working at less than 20% capacity. We're told the Somerset plant is also working at only a fraction of its capacity. As for the employees, the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development says it's responding in the immediacy and will continue to work in the long term to lessen the impact to the affected GE lighting employees in Kentucky. The cabinet says 139 people at the Lexington plant and 71 at the Somerset plant will likely be out of a job when the lights here go out for good. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Thanks, Garrett. A GE spokesperson says the local union has two months to ask for a different plan. Under the current plan, they'll phase out operations by the end of August 2017. Friends and family gathered together for a candlelight vigil in honor of a Lexington murder victim. Lexington police say they found Stephanie Mullins dead early Sunday morning behind an apartment building on Cross Keys Road. Her brother said he hoped the vigil would shed light on the kind of person Mullins was. Stephanie, she was, she was a great individual. She, she loved her kids. She, was, she loved her grandchildren. She was fam very family oriented. She, she really was. And she was a very good friend to all, to all of her friends. Lexington police have not made any arrests in the case. They say they're still trying to figure out what led to the murder. Mullins' family says they also wanted the vigil to honor all 13 people police say have been murdered in Lexington this year. Prosecutors may have a major problem in their case against a man accused of killing a retired school bus driver. Police charged Nicholas Willinger with murder, robbery, and burglary after the 2010 death of Sue Jones at her Scott County home. According to documents Willinger's attorneys filed, some of the evidence is now missing. They claim the detective investigating the case put two large notebooks on files on his bookshelf when he retired. But those notebooks are now gone, and no one knows what happened to them. Willinger's attorneys want the charges against him dismissed because of the missing evidence. Well, he's one of the most powerful Republicans in the whole country. For 30 years, Senator Mitch McConnell has been the face of Kentucky politics here and in Washington, D.C., most recently as U.S. Senate Majority Leader. Now he's putting his experience into these words in a new book, The Long Game. Kelly Meyer from our Washington Bureau learned about McConnell's game, and she says it's far from over. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell is giving a chapter by chapter glimpse into his life, which the political veteran says is just like anyone else's. What I tried to do is to talk about things that I think a lot of people could identify with. In his new book, The Long Game, McConnell hits on all of the bases of his life, from campaigning in high school elections to telling off the neighborhood bully. It was an early example of how when you, you, it's important not to let yourself push, get pushed around. And he didn't. McConnell won election after election, from high school president to county judge to U.S. senator. His 30-year career on Capitol Hill helped thrust McConnell into one of the highest political positions in the country, Senate Majority Leader. McConnell doesn't just love politics, he also has a soft spot for sports, from tailgating Louisville football games to taking in some baseball here at Nationals Park. He says there's always a lesson to be learned from sports, and he's taking some of the tactics from the playing field to the Senate floor. There's always somebody better. McConnell has had some fierce battles, most recently over gun control. The Republican led Senate blocked several bills, including one that would prevent those on the terror watch list from buying guns. The challenge is how do you do that consistent with the Constitution? You know, the Constitution can't just be waived. McConnell wants the stories in his book to stand as a reminder that Congress can and has worked together. But even that's become rare as the, the country and so lawmakers short, are more divided you know, West, than ever, you know, especially during this presidential race. I think the American people expect a certain level of seriousness um, about uh, the most important job in the country. McConnell has endorsed Trump, but his candidacy could impact down ballot races. McConnell is fighting for the GOP to keep control of the Senate, but he's no stranger to challenges, personal or political. Just keep at it. You know, you'll run into roadblocks, speed bumps, get up the next day, don't give up, and keep going. And if you do, there's an overwhelming likelihood you'll get where you're headed. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer.
All right, and uh, he made it uh, clear uh, to me in an interview recently about the same book. He's going to run again in uh, 2020, it looks like. So, yeah. What a career. Our time this morning is 440, and WKYT this morning is just getting started. There are all kinds of options when it comes to buying meat for your family, but what do you, what do, you do with all these meat options? <laughs> well, I guess you cook them up. We'll hear from a registered dietitian when we come back. We have a couple of showers over toward eastern Kentucky, and for today, it's a small chance of rain. It's mainly about your weekend, but it's not all weekend. I'll show you when that rain comes on in. Coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It is in the low to mid 70s once again early this morning. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris, and we're looking outside and not seeing much go on. However, there's still a few showers left over in far eastern Kentucky, and that's where we're seeing that. Trying to move on out of here. We have the storms going on back across 64 into West Virginia. So if you're seeing it, sitting in eastern Kentucky and you're looking due east, that's what you're seeing. It's over in West Virginia. Not going to bother us because it's moving away from us. So there's some good news for us. Another small chance of rain for today, 30, 40%. And that's about it. Most of us stay dry again. And this is helping us out tremendously because we do have some heavy rain on the way. We've been talking about that all week long, but it's still looking toward the weekend. That's where the better opportunity of rain is. Not just the heaviest rain, more widespread rain too. So small chances again today. The past few days, people have picked up some pretty good rain in some spots. Absolutely, most of us have been dry, but still, when you do get that rain, there's a lot of moisture out there and it can fall heavy at a short period of time. Rainfall forecast, we travel through the next few days and you can still see that up north, central, northern zones, no doubt about it, it's your best chance to pick up that corridor of heaviest rain. Absolutely working your way back toward Indiana and also Illinois. That's where they're going to pick up some flash flooding. For us, flash flooding is still no major issue, but it's still going to be a problem as we approach that Sunday, Monday, and now it looks like it's going to be into Tuesday as well, just continuing to back on up. So hopefully we don't see it back up too far as uh, that will actually put us right in that corridor of just getting one shower and thunderstorm after another. There's your seven-day forecast, a small chance today. Tomorrow, I would still stick to your plans. Only a few storms out and about like the past couple of days, so I'd stick to those. The farther that this moves back, better likelihood of actually drying some things out for the weekend. However, I still expect on Sunday, still some storms would be likely late in the day. Monday and now Tuesday. Tuesday, we had a 40-50% chance of rain yesterday. Now it's at 60%. So those three days, still Sunday and Monday look like a good chance. We've had that since this past Monday. But uh, and now we're adding into Tuesday. So there you go. Here comes that big system heading our direction, guys. That's going to be the best chance of actually picking up some flash flooding around here. That's going to be the best chance of seeing widespread rain in the forecast. You're not going to see it today or tomorrow. And, and the good news about this, that it's backed up just about another 12 hours or so, is that that leaves us with a mostly dry Saturday, not fully dry, because we still got a few storms to deal with on Saturday, but mostly dry. So all there's right. some good news for a lot of us. That's great. It is. All right. We'll see how it all goes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. 446 right now. Hormone free, all natural, no antibiotics. All these labels you can find these days on meat packages can be confusing. In today's Mom's Everyday Minute, Best Food Facts explains what you need to know about buying meat. Hi, I'm Alice Choi. As a food blogger, I'm here at the grocery store at least three times a week, sometimes more. And I get questions all the time about the types of meat and poultry that I'm buying. So today, we're going to be meeting with registered dietitian Jen Haugen, and she's going to help us navigate through all the choices we have in the meat aisle. Hi, Alice. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I've picked out these meat and poultry products. Can you help explain what some of these labels mean? I can definitely do that because I know as a mom too, it's kind of confusing when you walk through the meat aisle. So let's take a look at what you have. So you have some ground chicken and you have some chicken breasts and they both say something about antibiotics. The ground chicken says raised without antibiotics and the chicken breast says no antibiotics ever. So I think the important thing to know is all of the poultry and all of the meat in the grocery store does not have antibiotics in it. Well, what about this one? This one says 100% all natural. So 100% all natural wording on a label isn't necessarily verified. Mm -hmm. So what that tends to mean though is that it's minimally processed and doesn't have any artificial ingredients in it. And then you have something like organic. 
which this is from a farm right. that chooses to raise their animals in an organic way, which means that they don't use any antibiotics in the animals that they raise. So all of these choices in your cart are really good choices. It really just depends on your personal preference, but know that all of these are safe for our families to eat. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. And when WKYT This Morning continues in just a moment, we have a lot more news for you on your Friday. Four brothers in Louisville are being paid back for doing good deeds. We'll tell you what they did for their community when we come back on WKYT This Morning. Welcome back into WKYT This Morning. Our time is 4.50 on your Friday. A grand jury has indicted a Breathitt County woman accused of killing her husband. Sandra Hurt faces murder and assault charges. Police say she shot and killed her husband, Henry, in June. They say she shot her son and a woman who was with him at the time, but they both survived. When police found Hurt, they say she was lying in a bed next to her husband's body. Police are needing help in finding a man now wanted for crimes in two Kentucky counties. Richmond police say they're looking for Billy Cottle. They say this surveillance picture of him was taken Monday at J. Webb Auto Sales in Richmond. Police say Cottle broke into the business and ransacked the office. Police say he is also wanted in Lee County for escape, fleeing and evading, and wanton endangerment charges. While Cottle is from Beattyville, police think he is staying in Richmond. A controversial Knox County school board candidate is receiving criticism from one of his opponents. Dexter Smith was the Knox County school board chairman until he resigned earlier this year. That came after a surveillance video surfaced showing someone else take, talking, uh, taking Smith's GED for him. Smith is one of three candidates running for school board district four along with Doc Ashburn and Chuck Stovall. Yesterday, candidates drew numbers to decide what orders the names would appear on the ballot. But only Stovall showed up. He didn't have good things to say about Smith. We're learning more about a southern Kentucky man who died in a motorcycle crash. Police say Bentley Hayes was riding on Highway 192 in Laurel County when his motorcycle hit a minivan. They say he died at the scene. Friends say Hayes was a well-known motorcycle rider, and he often organized charity rides to help families who lost loved ones in crashes. They spent the summer offering free lawn services for people in Louisville. And now four brothers are being paid back for their good deeds. Barbara Wilson says the yard work started as a punishment for one of her sons. She told him he had to mow yards. But it has turned into a source of inspiration and celebration, and the other three sons soon joined in. People around the world heard about the family's lawn service crew. An organization bought them a new lawnmower so they can continue their work. We've touched a lot of people's heart, and we've done good for a lot of people. The brothers say their free lawn care service went viral online. They received messages from as far away as Australia and Africa. Well, good for them, and what a good deed, really. Really neat. <laughs> they may be starting something that they don't know where it's going to take them. Coming up next, we'll have a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. Stay with us. It's 4.56 as we welcome you back into WKYT this morning on your Friday. The weekend's almost here. Yeah, That's yay. a real good thing, right? Good thing. <laughs> Definitely. It's time to take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. The crews worked four hours overnight to put out a fire in a Lexington house near UK's campus. The fire started just before midnight at a house on South Limestone and Maxwellton Court. We're going to find out how the fire started and where it started coming up at the top of the hour on WKYT this morning. Thousands of University of Kentucky students will begin moving back into the dorms tomorrow, and combined with the construction going on, the move-in is expected to significantly impact traffic in and around campus. Mike Byer will be looking at how the changes impact you coming up on WKYT this morning. Hey, what could impact that is showers that may be uh, more numerous tomorrow. Sure, There's... tell us about it, Micah. Yeah, and it looks like it's definitely going to move on in parts of your weekend. Today, still a small chance of rain. Today is going to be much like the past few days where some of us get rain and, and some of us will be left there and the heat index at 95 to 99 degrees. That's just the way it's going to go again today. So if you have any plans, stick to them. You have any events going on later on this afternoon and evening, stick to them. Just know there is that possibility, there is that slight chance that you could have a passing shower or thunderstorm. Stick with us. We have another two hours of WKYT News coming up with more news, weather, and sports at the top of the hour.